IGCSE Computer Science. Um, in this video, we'll look at the case statement. So th they um, call it the case of otherwise end case statement, or the case statement for short. And um, if you remember from the last video, the last part, we looked a little bit at the um, elif statement um, in Python. So um, with the uh, climbing down the ladder, um, each step is an um, if or elif statement. Um, and if, if the step is true, then it executes whatever's in that block and then jumps off the ladder, ignoring everything afterwards. So this is how the case statement kind of works, but it's in a different format. So this is how it would work. This um, pseudocode would work. Input name. So we input uh, Scott. It would say, OK, uh, case name, the variables here. So, the case of um, the case Scott of, and then um, it would say, okay, is name equal to Thomas? No. Okay. Next line. Is name equal to Gerald? No. Next line. Is name equal to Scott? Well, yes, it is. So run this output work on part three, and then jump off. Then finish. And the end case is to, um, well, it's, it's end case like the case statement is, has ended. Like, that's the end of the case statement. Yeah. So, um, let's try something else. Let's say we said Saksham. It would say, okay, is name equal to Thomas? Nope. Gerald? Nope. Scott? Nope. Alice? Nope. Saksham? Yes. Output work on part, um, work on part five. Now, what if we entered a name that wasn't on the list? So, or wasn't listed here, such as Alex. So, it would say, okay. Um, is name equal to Thomas? Nope. Gerald? Nope. Scott? Nope. Alice? Nope. Saksham? Nope. So what do we do now? Well, let's let's uh, let's run the otherwise um, statement here, and output name not on list. So the otherwise um, is basically for when name is not equal to anything listed here, or the variable here is not anything listed. So let's take a look at that in Java. I mean, I would I would show you in Python, but Python doesn't have like a dedicated switch statement. I mean, you can create one, like you can create a function, but uh, it doesn't actually have a real switch statement or case statement. Um, switch statement is what um, Java and I think a few other other um, high-level languages call it. But let's, let's let's take a look at it. So here we are in the um, Java IDE, which is Eclipse. The Python one I use, by the way, is called PyCharm. Um, Anyway, so um, this might be a bit confusing, but just ignore all of this. Just focus on whatever is in this um, function or method right here, whatever's in the main. Um, and uh, this basically means, well, this is just to make everything easier. So instead of having to do system.out.println, um, I could just write print line to um, print something. All right, so. Here's how it would work. So we input name. So in Java, you have to give the data type, or in this case, the class, because um, in Java, a string is a class. It's a string name. And then um, say read line. Oh, yeah, if you're following this, you won't, you won't be able to use read line because you need the console program. So enter name. And then once we've input our name, we could use the switch statement, which is the case statement, basically. And Java uses um, curly brackets to um, for, for um, grouping lines of code. So we have case, um, say case, what was our first one? Thomas, case Thomas, print line work on part one work on part one. And then we do the same thing with the other names. I think that's Thomas, Gerald, Scott, Alice, and Sakshan. Um, and that's pretty much it. So let's just change these to work on part three, part four, part five. So let's go ahead and run this. 
and we'll enter um, Gerald. So enter name Gerald. So it says work on part two, part three. But no, hang on a second. Why is this? Why is this printing? Well, in Java, um, you need to kind of tell Java when your blocks have ended. So when, like for for each case, when like you can have multiple lines for each case. You have to tell it when you're finished with um, your lines for each block. You do that by adding the break statement. So just add this to the end of every um, every line, and then try to run this again, Gerald, and work on part two. So then it should say work on part two, break, oh, that means stop the switch statement, just go to the end, it's finished. So what if we, ha we entered um, a name that wasn't on the list, like Alex? Well, nothing would happen, because we haven't told it to actually print um, name not on list. In Java, the otherwise statement is known as the default case. So default, and then we can print um, name not on list. Name not on list. And that's pretty much all there is to it. We don't need a break statement because this is the end of the switch statement anyway. So it's going to say, okay, uh, name not on list. Is there anything else? After? Nope, nope. This is just this thing here, here, which means end. Well, that's it. So let's go ahead and uh, run this. Alex, Alex, name not on list. And of course, we can add Alex if you want to. You can say work on part six. But um, that's pretty much how the switch statement works, um, or the case statement, as um, you call it in the pseudocode. I suggest that you use the word case because the examiners are expecting that. It's on the mark scheme. Um, if, there, if there's a task that requires you to use the um, case statement. Um, because some examiners may not know Java, so they might say, oh, what does this mean? But, I mean, I mean, they might figure it out, but just play it safe and use case, I'd say. So, yeah, thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll look at, um, all of the loops in Java. Or, actually, maybe, maybe, no, yeah, well, I'll think of a language.